Uh, it's my uh, uh, honor and my pleasure uh, to introduce uh, this special session uh, in uh, our program, uh, which is uh, dedicated to the presentation of uh, one of the most outstanding mm -hmm. international personalities among our invited, sp uh, invited speakers for this Congress. Uh, it's uh, Professor Hari Shankar Sharma, who is a professor at the Uppsala University. Uh, he's a professor of neuroscience. He is uh, uh, very well known all over the world uh, for his uh, outstanding uh, research since many years in neuroscience, in particular in the pathology of the uh, blood brain and the blood spinal barrier, but not only this, uh, in uh, normal and pathological conditions, both in human people and in experimental studies. Uh, it is a worldwide recognized personality in the field of neuroscience, but I have to confess and uh, I'm very glad to have uh, the possibility to do it publicly. We know each other since many years. Uh, because uh, Professor uh, Shankar Sharma is one of the most constant and best friends of Romanian neurologists, practically since uh, almost 15 years, I think. Yes. Uh, he's almost uh, at least uh, one time a year in Romania. Uh, for presentation, teaching courses, uh, which we have together. Today, it's uh, my pleasure to introduce him to this, our first conference, interdisciplinary conference for neuroscience and uh, neurotechnology, which is very close to the field of uh, research and of education, Professor Sharma. And uh, the title of uh, the conference uh, novel therapeutic strategies uh, using nanomedicine. Please, Professor Sharma. Thank you very much. I am very honored to be here because I consider Romania as my second home. And thank you very much for Professor Vajanaro for so kind introduction. I am a very simple man doing some research on central nervous system, trying to find some new aspects of therapy. <coughs> and we are using nanomedicine since 2004. I am introduced to this nanomedicine by US Air Force Research Laboratory, and we are working with uh, US Army on various aspects. The main project that we are working is the neuro degeneration neuro degeneration and neuro regeneration in the central nervous system role of nano medicine this is the main project we are working since 2003 and it's a very large project as you can see that's supported by the department of defense european office of uh, aerospace research laboratory national center of toxicological research and many other organizations also in Romania. So it is a large collaborative study. I will show you in another 20 minutes some of the specific points in our research related to Alzheimer and how we can come into the play with some nanomedicine. And you can see Dr. Motasan from Romania. We are working in collaboration. Dr. Lachnetra from Spain, Dr. Asia from United States, and Dr. Kiyan. Dr. Peter Manjuru from Far East Federal University in Vladivostok, Russia, and also the Russian Academy of Science. We have developed a collaboration with this, and I am one of the distant director of Europe Network Program of Russian Academy of Science and Far Eastern Federal University. So we are collaborating with this. Dr. Patnayak is from India. Dr. Mosler from Austria. 
and Dr. Nodari from Harvard University, Dr. Kastelani from the University of uh, Maryland, and Aruna is my wife. She, she is the Secretary of Research, so she is also my boss at the institution and at home. <laughs> I must acknowledge the very sad demise of one of our close friends and friends of Romania, Dr. Stephen Scapper. He unfortunately passed this year and I dedicate my talk to Professor Stephen Scapper. I have to state that whatever I am telling to you today is based on our own observations and ideas. It has nothing to do with any government agencies we are working with. You know that our military populations are very prone to Alzheimer and Parkinson's disease. <coughs> the basic reason is Probably they have some part of their lives mild or moderate traumatic brain injury. So traumatic brain injury enhances or could be a risk factor for Alzheimer and Parkinson's disease. <coughs> so therefore, we are trying to find out various kinds of uh, factors that can stimulate these kinds of diseases and then try to find out basic experiments to find some nanomedical treatment. Alzheimer's disease is quite common and one, there are several studies telling about 5,000 patients are adding every year in United States of America. But this is not the question of United States of America in every country and every part of the world. This Alzheimer's disease is a problem. And so far we have no idea how to treat it or make them better. There are lots of talks going on that what is dementia, what is Alzheimer's and which is more important than that and it's a lot of controversies. But as you can see here that my cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease is quite different. And this can be found the recent publication in 2018. So we must differentiate. Dementia is different thing, Alzheimer's disease is different thing. I'll show you another example here that this is healthy brain and this is mild Alzheimer's disease and severe Alzheimer's disease. What you can see that hippocampus is severely impaired. So these are the important parts in Alzheimer's disease and that's why we have problems. This is one of the paper I show you a military risk factor for Alzheimer's. Dementia and your degenerative disease. And you can see here military risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, traumatic brain injury, post traumatic stress disorder, and probably this is increased in the beta and phosphorylated tau. These theories are going on for a long time, but now we have one. traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. This clears many facts that was controversial till now. And I'm showing you some example. So here, this is the first layer is traumatic brain injury. This is Alzheimer. This is post-traumatic stress disorder and this is combination of these things. The authors claim, as you can see that, the deposition of an oral beta peptide is very different in all other cases. <coughs> but the most important point is that post-traumatic stress disorder has much more an deposition than traumatic brain injury or even Alzheimer's disease alone.
The second thing is that, as you can see here, this is health brain, this is traumatic plus post-traumatic stress disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. Here you can see that post-traumatic stress disorder is much more affected by amyloid B. So they say that now we can have fingerprinting of Alzheimer's disease, traumatic brain injury, and even post-traumatic stress disorders. They are entirely different things. Now the question is, where is amyloid beta peptide deposit? The answer to this question, and you can see here that frontal, cingulate, temporal, parietal, and occipital cortex, normal post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, and traumatic brain injury plus post-traumatic stress disorder. There is different areas, different parameters are increased with amyloid beta peptide. So now we can clearly distinguish using these techniques what is underlying in a patient. And that is very important discovery so far according to my They are talking about for a long time that blood brain barrier is the gateway of neurological disorders. And even five years ago, people are not talking at all about blood brain barrier changes in Alzheimer's disease. The point is that we all know that amyloid beta peptide is present in plasma. But the one of the key theories advocated by <coughs> persons that amyloid deposition in brain depends on its not exclusion by the brain. <coughs> so the efflux of amyloid beta peptide is reduced. <coughs> but the point is that when the blood barrier is increased, plasma amyloid beta peptide comes into the brain and deposited there. This aspect <coughs> is still neglected. And this one paper came just now that plasma, plasminome factor, you can see here. It's very important, and the authors show that the depletion of blood plasma is sufficient to protect against both innate immune cell activation in the brain and Alzheimer's disease when they have worked in knockout mice they are able to prevent it. So the plasma factors are very, very important in the development of Alzheimer's disease. Do we have any proof? I say yes. This data, I'm sorry. <coughs> this data from Master University, long ago, was totally ignored. This is a 68 years old patient and leakage of blood on value is clearly seen here. In our laboratory, probably this is one of the first examples when we have seen leakage of albumin, endogenous albumin in the brain of Alzheimer's disease mouse and that was prevented by a drug cerebrolysin that is the mixture of balance of different type of neurotrophic factors. So this was one of the proofs that blood brain barrier really plays an important role. <coughs> to prove our hypothesis, we have used amyloid beta in cerebral spinal fluid, and you can see this is control, and this is uh, not out mice, Alzheimer mice, and cerebralizing has really decreased. But when we have used nano level cerebralizing, the values are much more further decreased near normal level. The involvement of P tau results are very similar. We have much more better effect when we have used nano virus cerebralizing. So, therefore, we are doing experiments. To create Alzheimer-like situation by infusing amyloid beta peptide into the CSF for a long time. This is the standard model in animal. The question is, in this model, if we apply traumatic brain injury, do we have exacerbation of brain pathology? And if this is true, then how we can reduce it, either using normal drug or using nanomedicine?
Nowadays, people are using not only drugs for nanotelepathy, <coughs> also using the stem cells. And some of you are aware that stem cells are able to repair many neurodegenerative diseases, so it can also be in Alzheimer's disease. We used a model of concussive head injury. And that model consists of a dropping of 114.6 gram weight on the parietal skull, inducing an impact of 0.224 Newton. And this is the model of moderate counter to injury that is commonly seen in human cases of motor vehicle accident or any other kind and even in military cases. To further prove it that the model is working, we can see that the uninjured left side is more damaged than the injured side. This shows a beautiful example of counter to mechanism that are working in this animal model. Head injury is one of the biggest problems in any <coughs> military. As you can see here, more than 244,000 traumatic brain injury cases are there in US military. It's an old data. Penetrating injuries is 3,800, severe, moderate, mild, and many unclassified. There is also differences between ages, 15 to 17, 18 to 24, 25 to 24 and 35 to 44 years and male and female. So this is quite prevalent in military organizations and the results are entirely different. This data show that if you have moderate concussive injury, your networking and motor planning will be affected. These are without concussion, these are after concussion. So therefore, we infused amyloid beta peptide in animals after concussive head injury, looking for pathological changes and then trying to reduce those changes using different strategies. We advocated use of nanotechnology in Alzheimer's disease and we are working on that. study single therapy, then we try to study co-administration of different things and I can tell you that some of the combinations could enhance the superior neuroprotective effects but some of them can neutralize. So therefore we have to choose which combinations are good. These are titanium nanowires, they have US patent in University of Arkansas Fayetteville. We are using that technology to level different kinds of drugs or agents. This is Dr. Wang and this is Dr. Brian Tian. They have US patent of nanowire technology and we are collaborating with them to level different kinds of drugs and agents. As I told you, that stem cells can also live longer, produce better effects when they are nanowired. <coughs> Just to show some data, traumatic brain injury is a surface and lower beta applied brain pathology. And here you can see that uh, rubber barrier breakdown, brain mm -hmm. of formation, neural injury, and lower beta applied deposit, and number of albumin cells that lead. Traumatic brain injury after an lower beta applied infusion has significantly enhance all the parameters that we can see here. Nanorelative of cerebralizing in traumatic brain injury reduces these factors in all cases. Nanorelative of median primal stem cells do also the same thing, but the combination of these two were significantly reducing these pathological parameters. <coughs> what is the proof of this? This is an example. Untreated, many neuronal changes can be seen here. Medium chimera stem cells alone, and this is nanowire cerebralizing, and the combination of them produces much better neuronal changes here. I mean, preservation of neurons 
as compared to the other activities after coming to end. The other point I must tell you that is facing our military is sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation is one of the important aspects for brain dysfunction in any kind of military. <laughs> and also we know that doctors that they are using emergency services and awake whole night, they may also have some problems in decision making processes. But in the military sleep deprivation and decision making processes are well documented. I would like to share you with one example that research has shown that the sleep deprivation and performance is very similar to that of high alcohol level in the plasma and impairment. These are very important points that sleep deprivation alone can alter neurological ability and decision making processes. I am not showing uh, those data but just I want to tell you that sleep deprivation after traumatic head injury also exacerbate brain pathology and when my wife submitted this to <coughs> innovation who administration of nanoviral family anxiety stimulating hormone and cellulizing enhances your protection in the very good following sleep deprivation is it recognized that 2016 tech connect innovation more 15% of all submitted technologies so it means that the combination therapy and also combination of two inserts are very important and much more practical in military life. This was the citation and the jury were from all these different organizations. <coughs> So we also examined neuronal nitric oxides in A's in Alzheimer's disease and B, this is the control and after CHI and the very unique, much more after regulation of neuronal nitric oxide in A's that is also inducing damage. <coughs> when we have used nanowire cerebralizing and neuronal nitric oxides in A's antibodies, you can see that the reduction is quite <coughs> clear. Also, adding the median time of sensors and a wire. So we can say that, for example, increase in the neural nitric oxide synthase after AUG infusion is important and also it is cerebral and portrait the campus and thalamus. And this intensity was further subverted by fantasy <coughs> wedding jury and these were reduced by nano velocity of combination. Do we have any other proof that this combination of treatment really works? Apart from morphological changes, we examine biochemical parameters and we measure and in this scale. So here you can see that P tau and your data peptide, neural nitric oxide synthesis cells and after injury, they are all increasing. Now, for cerebralizing, we use them. Cerebralizing was in the dynamic sensor, but also much more effective. And when we have added further, the third parameter, neural mass, and the other side, and the antibody, they are also in the country. I'm showing only those combinations that are working in our hand. The other point is, Nepralysin is an enzyme which is elevated in Alzheimer's disease, it is elevated in traumatic brain injury. But if anything is elevated in any disease, what they are doing? Not destruction only, maybe they are elevated because of endogenous neuroprotective ability. That could be a possibility. And how to test that? As you can see here, like nepralysin and enzyme they can be seen together, but they are not seen when they are not being created. So in this case, we have also delivered nanowire cellulizing together with uh, metalizing. 
and you can see this is red and red, that is function to the formation and then the color If you look here, then this column <coughs> is here, you can then by symbolizing and metabolizing, you can use that same thing to reduce than the unfiltered group. Hippocampus, I was telling that this is much more degenerated in a dryman disease. These were hippocampal cells and you can see here that cellulizing and metabolizing together show many neurons were in good shape as compared to the unfiltered group and cellulizing was also better but combination that further enhanced. So the combination therapy, if we use good agents, we can enhance neural protection. I don't have time to show some of the combinations that were not good, but I can show this cartoon, and this is the homing data of me, as many drug companies are doing to test their drugs. There are four compartments. One compartment is near normal, like lenectum. And this is the worst compartment, untreated in geodgo. You can see that one compound is nano wire and given. <coughs> it comes in this compartment. Some of the comp nano wire compartments, the drugs are in this compartment. So then you know what? Some of the drugs are in between. So the message is very simple. Just nano wiring or nano delivering cannot make a bad drug to good drug. You should have good drugs. That should be delivered using nano delivery by any means, either nano wire or PLG level. We are also comparing those things. Then they will have enhanced neural protection. This point is important in this research. Now the question comes: Why nano delivery of agents enhance neural protection? To our knowledge, at that point. <coughs> Things are not clear, although we have measured biochemical and also others. They reduce much more better oxidative stress and other parameters. But it appears that in our case, nano wire drugs that can penetrate within the endothelial cells, making tiny hole, not damaging enough, can come into the intracellular or extracellular environment. They release their material for longer time, like natural mini osmotic pumps, and that's why. The again point is, they are also not easily catabolized because they are bound to nanomaterials and releasing their drugs slowly. So that could be one of the important aspects of enhanced neural protection. Another example, you can see that co-administration of nanowire cellulizing with antibodies to neural antibodies and they can be in nano stem cells. In pathophysiology, pathology, we usually understand that this is 20% of technology of 2018. These results were also incorporated in advancement of nanotechnologization. Society for Neuroscience just concluded from our group, and we are very happy that Society for Neuroscience, largest neuroscience body on this earth as it was potential. We are also educating these things using different publications. This is from Springer in 2017. <coughs> this is from El Senior 2018 and some volumes are underway. So we can say that nano delivery of drugs could be an important aspect in future medical treatment. I can only tell you without showing the data that if we deliver the same drug to same condition using two different methods, for example, PLGA or TI-02 nanowire delivery, TI-02 nanowire delivery is superior in our hands. Even PLGA can also protect similar. So we believe that nanomedicine has a future and for detection of Diseases, nanomedicine is already in clinical arena. Nanomedicine, now the FDA has some regulation and it is coming soon that use of nanomedicine. And therefore, this is the high time to do experiments also in different aspects of neurological disorders. <coughs>